identity um, we are like actors you know our audience is the people we interact with our costume is the clothes we wear it can include hats it can include makeup I did an interview with a group of people and while I was talking to them I asked them a question and they were talking and responding midway through the guy takes his hat when we're talking to we're talking about appearance at this point. Midway through, the guy takes his hat and he turns it and puts it backwards and continues to talk. And I'm like, ting! He just began a performance for me. You know, he, he started putting on the persona he wanted to portray. Identity management is a collaborative um, production. The people we talk with, are, they're our audience, you know. The book, Interplay, describes significant other as someone who influences you, you know, and plays a primary role in how you see yourself and build your self-concept. For me, um, the people that play a huge part in my life is my mother, my, my parents, and um, a couple of friends of mine. Another way we develop develop our self concept is through comparison, you know. As a kid I used to call myself a tomboy. Um, because when I looked at the, all the other girls, like even my sisters, they played with Barbie dolls and I played with a basketball. They played house, I played construction worker. Um, at school the other girls played in the corner amongst girls and talked. I was with the boys playing football, so, you know, when I looked at other girls my age, I was like, wow, I really don't match this picture. I'm a, I'm a little bit different. And a lot of people would say, oh, you're a tomboy. <laughs> and I had my best friend, he would say, no, no, she's not. She's one of us. She's cool. She is like a, she is like a boy. So like, tomboy was one of my characteristics as a kid. But the point here is, we develop our self-concept through our interactions with others, what people call us, and essentially how we compare to others. What makes a touch become love, you know? You see it all the time. You see couples holding hands. You see a man or a female hold, hold the small of the back. And it symbolizes something. And my question is, not so much of a performance, but my question is how do we know that touch meant I care. How do we know? I have a dog. I, I can take my hand and go like this to my dog instantly. My dog knows to sit down. Everywhere and always we're using symbols. Not everywhere always we're performing. Everywhere always we're interacting with symbols. And that's what I'm interested in. That's, that's, that's what has this old noggin here ticket. Every day, always, we're interacting with symbols and we're creating and manipulating meaning. When you think of communication, 
You must realize that communication is nothing more than sharing messages. And in other words, communication is sharing a story. Um, and with that story, we create meaning. Based on the social penetration theory, we're like onions. And we learn each other by peeling away at this onion. But we never reach a core. We never reach a core. And that's the part that intrigues me because it, it connects to symbolic interaction, it, symbolic interactionism. It connects to Irvin Goffman when he says that we're, we're always wearing masks, you know. There's no core. There's no core. And the reason I believe that is because for 22 years, I've been painting a picture. And every day, my picture has new strokes on it. And you're probably like, what is she talking about? But one day I was a blank canvas. I was a baby. Just a blank slate, blank canvas. Plain, with nothing on it. And one day, a splash of color dropped onto this white canvas. Another day, black strokes began to get on my canvas. And the colors brown, the colors black, they weren't just another color in the crayon box. They were part of my identity, you know? Um, black is beautiful. I, I grew up watching um, specials on freedom marches and black became part of my identity and then you have more color you have words smeared across this canvas and pretty soon this canvas begins to create a picture it begins to evolve and the picture that I'm painting is called Claudia Floyd and every day more and more colors, more and more meaning is thrown, sometimes splashed, sometimes carefully etched into this canvas. And we each have one. We each have a canvas that started off blank. When we were babies, we were nothing more than just breath, breathing life with no meaning. But with the pinch of the cheek, with the rub of the hair, Quiet stories while they're rocking you. Color, meaning, words, adjectives, descriptions became a part of your life and remained on your canvas. Even some got erased, you know? Our life is art in many ways. Our life is a performance. Our life is a picture. Our life are words. And that, my friend, is why I love communications.